Okay, this came as a bit of a surprise, but we're gonna do a walkthrough of Notion's brand new calendar app together. Okay, so before we actually jump into the walkthrough, I'll literally show you my screen and we're going to go through the whole app together. I have not actually explored it that much and I'll be sharing it on this screen over here, but I did wanna share a list of notable features first. I read an article about the app and this is, this is the list of notable features. The first thing is that it is meant to be an all-in-one space for work and personal things. So Notion Calendar is trying to be a hub for any and all type of calendar tasks, goals, productivity type stuff which is very appealing to me, <laughs> especially because I do use Notion. Its first integration is Google Calendar, which is also great news for me. Google Calendar is what I use right now and I do pretty much everything in it. So it's good to see that their first integration is Google Calendar It will help with this walkthrough. It is also fully standalone. So you do not need to use Notion to use the Notion Calendar app, although you can in several ways such as you can attach Notion documents, you can create Notion documents, I guess collaboratively if you're having a meeting within the calendar app, and you can also sync Notion information such as tasks in Notion. I'm assuming if you have like spreadsheets in your Notion already and they have calendar dates next to them, it might sync, but we'll see. The next thing is that it has a scheduling tool and it can generate emails to attendees. So when I was reading this article about the app, they compared it to Calendly. If you've ever heard of Calendly, it's kind of a tool where someone will send you a Calendly link and it will open up their calendar and time slots that they are available to meet you. And you will pick a slot that works for you as well. And then it would create a meeting basically. So it's got something going on like that. On the Mac, there's a menu bar. Don't know what that means, but we will check it out, especially cause I'm going to be on a Mac right now when I do the walkthrough. There is an iOS app, but there's no Android app yet. So they are working on an Android app and that is what I would need because I have an Android phone. And it also makes me think that I hope they're gonna do widgets because I use widgets for Notion, I use widgets for Google Calendar, which you'll see in a walkthrough of everything that's on my Google Pixel 8 Pro very soon. I already recorded that video, but I use widgets for all of those things and I hope they do a widget for this Notion Calendar app if I decide to end up using it. But yeah, those are the most notable things. Let's get into the walkthrough and see how it actually works. Okay, so this is just my regular Notion board, Notion workspace. And as you can see, there is an option over here now. It says new, and that is the calendar. Like I said, you don't need to have a Notion account or like this whole Notion space to use it. I, I believe you can just go to Notion calendar and it would work but I'm just gonna click it in from here and it opened a brand new window. So there you go, it, it worked. <laughs> and it says sign in with Google. So I'm going to do just that. I think I used the wrong account there. Uh, no, actually I did use the right account. Okay, so it's asking for all of these permissions. I'm going to hit continue and welcome to Notion Calendar. Okay, so beautifully designed modern day calendar connected with your Notion workspace, uh, all of your commitments in one place. Let's get started. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into it and see what we can do. Like I said, nothing, I have no like prior knowledge. I just set it up in front of you. So uh, be patient with me <laughs> if I have no idea what is going on, but the space looks incredible. I love that it is in the dark mode because my Notion is typically in the dark mode as well. But yeah, I love I love that it's in dark mode. You can actually toggle that if you want. I like that it looks very similar to Google Calendar actually. We have the overview of the year or the month here. Then we have the weekly view over here. We have different types of calendar accounts that you can add in here. This is almost looking exactly like Google Calendar, which I'm a fan of because I use Google Calendar. I'm just gonna move myself over here so that I can see this bar. And I'm pretty sure this is the menu bar that they were talking about when they said that you can see the menu bar in the Mac. I'm sure that you can download apps now. So you would go into the app store, you would get it, and then you would get a menu bar, blah, blah, blah. But I think it looks like this as well. Clearly I'm using the web version and I'm assuming that most of y'all are going to be using the web version as well, at least for now. 
As you can see here, it says no upcoming meetings, so I'm assuming the meetings will show up here. And then it says welcome to Ca Notion Calendar, and then there's a bunch of different things to get started. Starting with the desktop app, I'm not gonna download it right now. I just don't want to do that, but I eventually might. The next thing is event notifications. So I'm just gonna hit enable and see what happened there. It asks me if I wanna show notifications. I'm gonna say allow, all right. Very easy. Calendar accounts. So clearly there's nothing showing up on my calendar right now and I set it up using this Gmail account. I'm actually going to go ahead and add another Gmail account that has my actual stuff in it, which is my personal email. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I believe it is loading in my personal email account. So we're going to go ahead and wait for that to load. I see it's saying it right down there. And it looks like it worked. So now we have a bunch of stuff on the calendar, which looks incredible. It is color coded because I did it color coded in Google Calendar. And so it's just replicating it really well, which I like. As you can see, anything associated with the podcast I do in yellow. So color coding does matter to me, even though it might just seem like it makes absolutely no sense, but it makes sense to me. Then it says, over here, Notion Workspace. Let's connect the Notion Workspace. Allow access, and this is just further proof that you don't need to have your Notion added to it, but you can if you want. So my Notion is now connected. I'm not sure how that's going to replicate because I really wasn't adding in much calendar type stuff into my Notion. I've just always relied on Google Calendar, but we'll see if anything pops up. And it looks like I've set up everything aside from the desktop app, which like I said, I'm going to do another time. But as you can see, a meeting popped up over here, Podmatch virtual event, which is actually happening today, right here at 1130. And then it opens up the link, which is super cool that I don't need to manually click into this event to access the link to join the meeting. I do have to do that in Google Calendar. So this is a major plus so far. Love that. Okay, let's keep going down this bar. It has scheduling snippet, which I believe this is like the Calendly type of tool. So let's click on it and see what happens. So this sidebar changed a little. It has availability. It has a scheduling link. If I want to toggle that on, I'm going to click yes. Meeting with me. <laughs> I don't know why my voice sounded like that, but meeting with me. 30 minutes, sure. New York time conferencing, sure, sure, sure. And then let's let's go ahead and like click something. Let's just click for here. Mark available times on your calendar. That's what it said. That's what it's hovering over at the bottom and saying. So I'm dragging and that's what I did. I just dragged it to show that I'm available at that time. Let's drag some more. Even though this is in the past, that wouldn't make any sense. But let's just let's just do examples of Say those are all of my free times to have a meeting with whoever and I'm sending this meeting to. So it auto generated an email, like I mentioned in the intro, with 30 minutes during any of these times all in EST work for you and then it wrote it out. This is incredible. If I have this for like work, oh my gosh, incredible because I have done this so many times for like my nine to five job, but you can just let me know or confirm here and then it has a Notion link, which is a scheduling link that I I added in, I toggled in, and I'm assuming that you can like adjust what this looks like if you change things here. So say for example, I change it to 45. This changed to 45. So that's very cool. New York, say I put it Los Angeles, it changed it to PST. Super, super cool. It's using some sort of like AI type of uh, capability there. It just looks very AI. <laughs> so that's kind of cool actually, it is useful. So now my calendar is holding all of these slots that I kind of uh, swiped onto, dra dragged onto, and it's holding it there so that in the event that somebody does select whatever time that they select, it's held there so no nobody else can kind of conflict it in the time being, if that makes sense. And then let's hit create just to see what happens. Snippet co copied to clipboard. Send, the re send it to the recipient wherever you like. Very cool. So it copied this and you can manually copy it too if you're unsure, if you want to edit it, blah, blah, blah. But now I can copy this and I can paste it right into an email 
this thing just did a whole email for me in addition to helping me schedule some time slots in. Very cool. I'm going to delete it because <laughs> I do not need to set up a meeting right now, but that is super cool. Now it says quick meeting, meet with. I wonder if I just like write in an email address. So let's do Slow Morning Diaries. Yeah. So Slow Morning Diaries does come up and then it says add participant and then you can manually just schedule a meeting like right in here. So Notion is using their own meeting link here. Clearly when we saw it when we were doing like the Calendly type of thing, they have like their own meeting service, which I don't think I can demo here because I have my camera kind of working right here, but that is very cool. I would love to try and host a meeting in Notion, especially if you don't need to have Notion in order to attend the meeting and people can just open it up on their web. I have a feeling like most of the times when I schedule meetings with Teams, which is usually what I use, uh, it prompts people to create an account and if you're dealing with people that aren't really tech savvy, that can become confusing for people and they feel like they need to create an account. Whereas this, perhaps it's similar to Google Meet, where you can just click into it and it opens up in the web and nothing is prompting you to create an account of some sort. Although I think with Google Meet, you might have to have a Google account. I don't know, can't remember. But that is very cool, very convenient, accessible, very helpful. I will 100% try to use that meeting tool when I'm scheduling meetings with my family, with my mom. My mom is not tech savvy in this way, so this might be a good test to do on her. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, useful shortcuts. We have the command menu, so it gives you the actual um, keys that you should use. It knows that I'm on the Mac. Very cool. Love this space. So far, I am liking it a little bit more than Google Calendar because of this option, because of the calendar scheduling option. I know Google Meet is a thing and you can very easily do that in Google Calendar, but there's something about it just being all on the sidebar instead of actually having to manually click into certain events and then edit from there makes it just one step less, which makes it one bit more convenient. And if it can integrate everything that I have in Notion, which you all know Notion has my entire life, uh, that would be incredible. So now let's move on to this sidebar. It, it populated some more things, right? It has like email addresses and what have you because I added in my other email address, my main email address. And my main email address has a lot of things synced to it. So that's why you're seeing a lot more stuff. Um, but down here, I see Sarah's Notion. And so things that have shown up that I believe, I'm assuming, can be integrated into this calendar are showing up here. Now it's kind of doing this hovering lighting thing, maybe in like a tutorial type of sense, to show me that I can toggle it as viewable or not viewable. It's a little eyeball. So let's try and do that. Let's see gardening season. I don't even know if I have anything under gardening season, but if it was gardening season, it would probably be in the spring, right? Um, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything for gardening season. Oh, look, I clicked on gardening season and something popped up over here, but like I said, I don't think I have anything added in my gardening season right now. So what I'm going to do is quickly toggle over to that, um, area in my notion where the heck did i put the gardening calendar maybe here uh, plant calendar no i'm looking for gardening season perhaps it's in my archives no i have no idea where i have gardening season let's try something else long da -da -da. let's just click on projects and see what happens Oh, look, if I hover over here, it says go back to today. That is actually super helpful. I also like the little highlight to show you what day we're actually on. The thing is, is that, like I mentioned, I don't really do much in this space here in Notion to have anything pre-populate. So it makes sense why nothing is showing up. I wonder if I can do something a little bit manually here and see what happens. Let's do a page and we're going to do test. And then we're gonna do, I'm assuming it's coming from a calendar view or a table view. So now let's do new database. 
we'll do test, we'll do test, <laughs> and then we'll add a date to it. And then I'm going to put in a date of something quite soon. Let's do tomorrow. And then let's see if it shows up over here. I wonder if I need to refresh or if it just immediately shows up because I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to refresh. And I still don't see it. Hmm. Let's go into something. Let's go to long form content ideas. I'm like so confused because I'm trying to go fast. That's not it. Where are these things? <laughs> I don't even remember where they are. Key dates. Oh, look. Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. And I know it was there before and I completely forgot. I can open it in Notion from here. So this whole thing that I'm having issues with, not being able to find it, I can just click it here and it will open up in Notion. So let's go back to Garden and Season and click Open in Notion. <gasps> How cool. This helps significantly with the issue that I literally just had in front of you. There's nothing on it, as you can see. Let's click something here and just write, you know, buy seeds, enter, and now it's there. Great. Now opening calendar. Let's see what happens now. It says calendar already added. I'm not sure what that means. But we see over here, this showed up, buy seeds. And it happened almost instantaneously, almost. It was a tiny bit of a delay, but it showed up here. And it shows up almost as like an all day event because I didn't put a time next to it. I wonder if I can put a time next to it now. Da -da -da -da. Include time. Here we go. And then let's put, um, I've never done this before y'all. Let's do five o'clock PM. Okay, cool. So now it says buy seeds, five o'clock PM. Let's go back to the calendar. Um, let's wait a few seconds. Oh my gosh. Wow. It was truly a few seconds and it moved over here. So now if I am truly in notion and I wanted to do things like this in notion, which I don't typically do, it would show up here, it would show up here, which is very, very useful for people who have been using Notion these, this entire time. It just shows up here alongside all of my other calendar integrations, incredibly useful, especially if you have like larger, broader things happening here, and then you wanna put like little tiny little tasks that are coming up from your Notion here, if that makes sense. Okay, I think this is incredible. I think this is a great start to what the calendar is all about. My battery is actually dying, so I'm going to end it off here, but I think we went through everything. I think we pretty much demoed everything that we could demo at this given point. I will definitely do some more updates on this, play around with it for a little bit longer. You know me, I like to make sure that I'm thoroughly checking something out before I can one, recommend it, and two, switch over to it. So we'll see how this goes. Let me know if you're interested in hearing more about it, but let's uh let's hop off of this now all right y'all so that is the walkthrough i hope it was interesting do you think that you'll end up using this instead of the calendar app that you're currently using by the way let me know what calendar app you are using maybe a lot of you use google calendar i think a lot of y'all who watch my videos use the same thing but i'm not too sure if i'm gonna end up using this to be honest with you i would absolutely need an app an android app so i'm gonna continue using the google calendar but i will integrate it into notion and try to play around with it in this new notion calendar to see if i can quickly transition into it if i do end up deciding to switch over to it completely i don't know it's a big change it's a big change for me but you let me know in the comments thank you so much for listening and watching and i will talk to you in next week's video